here at SFU, we have this really fantastic technology. It's called magnetoencephalography, or MEG. It's a really advanced brain imaging technology. It's the only MEG west of Ontario, and it gives us a really unprecedented look into what's happening in the brain, where and when. We can use this technology to study Parkinson's disease here at SFU in ways that no one has ever done before worldwide. So Parkinson's disease is a neurodegenerative disorder. It's a disease of aging. As you get older, you get more likely to develop this disease. And unlike the most common neurodegenerative disorder, Alzheimer's disease, instead of affecting cognition, your ability to think, it affects your ability to move. Since the world population is aging, these diseases of aging are becoming more and more of an issue. So treating these diseases, both in terms of helping people with their symptoms, but also trying to find ways to reverse the effects of the disease is really becoming more and more important. In this study, we're using brain imaging to look at how a certain drug affects the brains of folks with Parkinson's disease. The drug is the most common drug that we see prescribed to people with Parkinson's. It's called a dopamine therapy, and it basically helps them with their problems with movement. And what we did in this study is we actually measured how that drug is affecting the signaling of the brain. So we looked at people before they took the drug and after they took the drug, and we saw how the brain signaling changed. And what we saw was that we can track not only the good effects of the drug, we can track where in the brain we're trying to affect and see that it's affecting the right brain regions and helping them with symptoms. We also see that there's sometimes what we call off-target effects of the drug. So we can see the drug activating brain regions we don't want to be activating. So we think that might be really helpful for tracking the individualized responses to these types of drugs and helping with prescribing and therapeutics. So maybe we try different medications, maybe we adjust dosages differently, and this helps clinicians get at that question of how do we prescribe personalized medicine in a way that really helps the patient. But the more that we can personalize that approach, make it more expedient, uh, make it a bit more specific to that person, the better.